Well, if the trend continues, more than a million gardening enthusiasts will try their hand at growing transplants this year, and many of them for the first time. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we told you it was time to go ahead and start those warm season transplants like tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants, and hopefully you've got that accomplished. But one of the big problems with gardening enthusiasts trying to grow transplants, especially indoors in a home situation, is a problem called stretching, especially with tomatoes. And what happens is the plant just overgrows, it gets too tall and lanky, and a lot of times it's just from lack of light. But it's interesting that there's some research going on to help control this. Now in a commercial situation, wholesale growers use growth regulators to control the height so that when they're shipped to the retail garden centers, the transplants are the perfect size for you and I to purchase. But that's hard to do and, and pretty expensive in a home situation. So this research, and it's a big fancy word, and it's called thigmomorphogenesis. That's the big fancy word for research on mechanical stress of transplants. Now stress is nothing new to growing plants. Take for example, if we have a lawn that's real lush and, and growing real well, and if we withhold the water a little bit, we put that lawn under a little bit of stress and it actually makes the plants more adaptable. Another example of stress on plants would be with bonsai plants. The pruning action of those plants and the compacted root system causes those plants to be stressed. Now that reaction on transplants usually causes the plants to be a little bit shorter, thicker, larger stems. Um, also the leaves will be a darker green color and just an overall smaller transplant and that's what you want to try to do to control the height because once we take them out in the Oklahoma winds you know how easy it is from the to topple or break over the winds to break the tops out of them. Now how this is done at the University of Georgia and some of their tests they are doing research using different tools and techniques. They use stress just from your hand rubbing against the plants they also use a forced air or water pressure on the plants to provide stress to them. Another thing that they experimented with is just using a piece of cardboard and rubbing that over the plants. But the one that they found the most success was using like a broom handle or a dowel and rubbing that over the plants. Now you may think that uh, this is a silly thing to do, but they found a 30% reduction in the height of the plant. And again, if you get your started too early and it gets too loggy, leggy, that would be a, a great thing to do. So the way that they encourage gardeners to do this in a home situation, for one to two minutes at a time, just rub that dowel over the plants and do that two times a day. Now the n other important thing that you need to remember is that once the transplants, now these are cold crops, once the transplants get this tall, really it's too late. You need to do it right after you start getting those first true leaves that we talked about earlier on this show, or about this size, and you see we've got three different stages here, so the smaller the better. The other thing you need to remember too, there is a rating or a ranking of vegetable crops as far as which ones respond the best. Tomatoes, peppers respond the best to this method. Next would be eggplants. Cold crops are at the bottom of the list, and then if you're going to try your hand at growing transplants with like vine crops like watermelons or cukes, those are even further down. And what that means is they don't respond as well, and it's easier to damage the cold crops and the vine crops. Now like any research or experiment that you may try, there's always a few guidelines. Be very careful on how you do this. You can break the growing points out of them, again, especially on the cold crop. So you've got to be very gentle when you do this process. The other thing is, if you should get a disease, especially like in a greenhouse situation like we're in, on one side and you move that across a plant, you'll spread it to all of the plants if it's a foliar type disease. And then just for fun, be sure that you try just a couple of rows and maybe do your own experiment to see which one will work best and if you do see a difference in the growth rate. And again, just for fun, you might tease your friends and try to talk to them about thigmomorphogenesis and impress your gardening friends and see what they know. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. 
and join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.